So welcome to day two of SIHH uh, Geneva from uh, Watch It of Switzerland. Uh, for those of you that were with us yesterday, welcome back. For those of you joining us for the first time, welcome. Uh, very briefly, what SIHH is about uh, is one of two major watch fairs that happen here in Switzerland, of course. Uh, the first one here in Geneva. The second one will happen March 23rd in Basel and we'll, uh, we'll be there again. Uh, my name's Brian Duffy. I'm the CEO of uh, Watch It of Switzerland. Uh, we are the market leader in the UK, both with our stores and uh, also online. Uh, and for any US uh, folks that might be watching us out there, we'll, we'll soon be launching in the, in the US. Uh, so look out for that. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, great products. We'll be telling you about the trends that are happening here. Um, we'll be interviewing some of uh, the big personalities that are here and we look forward to bringing all that to you. We hope you find it uh, very interesting. We'll also be having a panel. I'm delighted to be joined by uh, some people who really know their watches here who are on our panel that uh, they'll be telling you everything about the product and the trends that they see. So from Watches of Switzerland, we have Faith Soteri, who's been with our company sometimes. She's an expert in watches. Uh, she buys all of our uh, specialist watches and she's going to be giving you her, her advice here on the panel. We have Mark Tolson, who's very, very well known in the industry. Mark's been buying watches for way over 50 years for, uh, for Watches of Switzerland for our group. He really does know, he lives for, and he, and he loves watches and uh, a, great, uh, a great addition to our panel. And we're also delighted to have Bill Prince. Uh, we are doing all of this in, in partnership with, uh, with our friends at uh, British GQ. Uh, Bill is the deputy editor of uh, GQ, uh, is a specialist in watches, knows and loves his watches, and delighted to have you on the panel, Bill. So we had an amazing, uh, exciting first day at SIHH yesterday. Uh, which we brought you yesterday evening. We've just put together a wee summary of what we thought were the, the exciting happenings. Let's take a look at it. The SIHH is the most luxurious watch event that you can possibly attend. You put on a beautiful watch, and I can honestly say this is about the most, this is my favorite watch I've ever worn. I'm not just saying it because uh, Jerome's here. First of all, we need stability, uh, political, uh, economic, uh, stability around the world. Uh, Europe has been suffering a lot uh, with terrorism this year. And what's the timepiece I have here in my hand? So a very special piece, a limited edition of 50 only. You know, here I'm, I'm wearing the, uh, the moon face on, on the Portofino. Last question, are, are you going to be playing the drums later this week? Uh, no. Uh. <laughs> If you want to know what's happening in terms of the watch industry for the remainder of the year, you absolutely have to be here. You cannot miss this event. It's beautiful. That's what I love. So that was uh, then. This is now. That was yesterday. This is today. We're now day two in SIHH uh, here in Geneva. Another fantastic day that uh, we really enjoyed. Really looking forward to, to telling you all about it. First brand we saw this morning uh, was Cartier, uh, fantastic brand, one of the biggest watch brands in the world. Uh, well known for jewellery, but also very, very well known and very influential in the wrist watches and, the, and watches generally. And we started today with a really exciting relaunch of, uh, of an iconic product uh, that we think is going to be fantastic for the UK. And to tell us about it, I'll introduce Faye. Hi, Brian. Um, yeah, today when we saw Cartier, they reintroduced um, the Panther collection, which originally came out in 1985 and ran till 2004. So we've already seen some models and some brands this week where uh, we've got some nods to heritage, and Cartier did the same, reached back into their archives, and they didn't disappoint. So the Panther is really loyal to the original model, so it was great to see. I'm obviously not old enough to remember when it first came out, but the, um, there's 15 executions um, on the 2K sizes. Mark's going to talk about a slightly larger one. So this is the entry price point. The entire collection is all quartz, and this piece starts at 3,200, and the range goes up to about 20,000 pounds with some more executions on diamond set. Um, so steel, steel and yellow gold, steel and rose gold. No, nope, there's no steel and rose gold, but there is a rose gold model, which I'm hoping they're gonna nickname the Pink Panther. Yep. But um, all in all, we were really, really impressed with this collection today. Yep, and a fantastic uh, 
range uh, for women, great price, great aesthetics, yeah. and a really uh, you know iconic uh, iconic design. And Mark, you were around to see Panther the first time round. So, what do you think about this uh, this relaunch? Yeah, I, w I was around. Yeah, I mean, and interestingly enough, I would, I've been in my mid thirties then, and the range is is aimed at that market, twenty five to thirty five year old. Uh, they're trying to capture Cartier are trying to capture that market with this product, and it's and it's great fun. I mean, it's true to uh, true to the original. Um, more or less, this is this is a bicolor version at about six and a half thousand pounds, um, and the signature things about the watch are, are obviously the bezel and the five link bracelet, and executed here with the with the two rows of, of gold in the bracelet. It, it's a really really cool looking watch. Um, it was big in the 80s. I think Charlie Sheen wore one in uh, in, in Wall Street in 1987. So it's uh, it, it's kind of got that kind of 80s vibe about it. But I think it's uh, I think it's a terrific watch, and we're really really hopeful that people are going to like it. I think they will. Um, was the, it, the fact that it's all quartz, Mark? Not a problem. Um, I think it's um, it, it allows the case to be really, really quite slim. Um, it's a, a kind of fuss-free watch. You just put it on, wear it. It's super accurate, um, super dependable, um, no fuss, no bother. Just wear it and love it, I think. And it allows it to do great materials. Yep, it does And uh, a great look and, and, and uh, at these uh, fantastic prices. So we think it will be great for the UK. Yep. And uh, a really important new launch for Cartier, targeted uh, at the women's market. Really, yeah. But uh, Cartier, is, uh, as well as being a great brand for women, is a great brand for men. I personally love my uh, love my Cartier. Mm -hmm. uh, I call it my tuxedo watch, and uh, really do enjoy wearing it. So it is a great brand for men. Yeah. And we saw a great launch uh, uh, last year of the Drive, and we've seen further expansions of that today, Bill. We did. I was lucky enough to be around last year when it was launched as well, which I didn't think I was going to be, because it's been a while, I have to say, since Cartier brought such a strong masculine piece into the collection. And yet, as you were saying earlier, Brian, it's got all the cues of great Cartier design, the shape, the case, unique, very dressy, very spoiling to look at, a beautiful piece. It was a big range when it launched last year. It covered the waterfront in terms of uh, materials used, some of the complications that they included. One that was quite obviously missing was the moon phase, which as we know gives it that great pop of color. We all love blue and it makes it, it really brings the dial of this piece alive. And another piece I knew we were looking forward to was a manually wound movement, which allowed it to be slightly narrower in the case, but it's also managed to make it slightly smaller. So even if you have a slightly smaller wrist, as many men do, to be fair, they can wear the new flat um, hand wound. But no, very special. I think guys are really loving this piece. Yes, and that uh, piece that uh, Bill's been showing uh, will, uh, will be available at £6,300, which we think for such an elegant uh, and attractive watch is, a, is going to be a great price. So I look forward to bringing that uh, to the UK market. In addition to seeing great product today, you conducted a super interview today with, uh, with Cartier, Bill. I did, yeah. I, I caught up with Arno Carré, who is their international comms director. Uh, he's very excited about this year for Cartier. They've got another very big anniversary coming along this year, which they'll talk about later in the year, I think. But I think if we think 100 years ago, we kind of know the piece we're talking about. And they've got great activity coming up in the UK, a huge exhibition arriving into the brand new design museum. So really now is the time to come to London and to look into Cartier. It's a very special moment for them. Great stuff. And we knew that there's going to be a big marketing events happening with Cartier this year as well. So a big, big year for Cartier. And we know this was a great interview. I haven't actually seen it yet, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Shall we take a look? Mm, please do. Well, here we are on the Cartier stand, one of the very most important stands at SIHH every single year. And I'm with Arno Carré, who is the Marketing and Communications Director. And we're here to talk about a big celebratory year for the company. Arno, can you tell me anything about 2017 and what it means for Cartier? Yeah, 2017 is a very important year for us, as we are going to showcase amazing signatures and signatures which are very true to Cartier's patrimony. So that's a very exciting year. We have uh, amazing novelties starting with uh, women because you know women are uh, the most important asset at Cartier. So women first with the relaunch of the Panther de Cartier and also for men with the continuation of a very successful story which is Drive, year right. two. A spectacular watch that uh, appeared last year. And as we were discussing earlier, fits perfectly with the story of Cartier, from the very first wristwatch to the present day. Exactly, because uh, with Drive, uh, Cartier is really at the uh, epitome of masculine elegance. You know, Drive uh, was launched last year at the SIHH, and it's a fabulous success so far, uh, with a creative event in Piti Uomo, in Florence, plus also an amazing amount of editorial, 
a fun event as well. So a lot of conditions that are making it successful. And we wanted really to continue the story with Drive Year 2. So we are launching the uh, Drive Moon Faces and as well the Drive Extra Plat. So a successful story that goes on. Well, Arno, I think we should speak about another very exciting project that's in the year ahead for you in England, which is the exhibition that's coming to the Design Museum, I hear. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, the exhibition, which will take place uh, from end of May until end of July, so will take place in the Design Museum, and it will be uh, scenographed by uh, Sir Norman Foster. Amazing exhibition around the design in watches, because you know that Cartier is the most legitimate inventor of Montre de Forme, uh, of shape watches, and it's going to be really uh, an exciting exhibition, mostly on our uh, iconic collections such as Tank and Santos. How amazing. So fans of Cartier, particularly fans of the archives, should come to London in May and see your amazing exhibition. We very much look forward to it. Arno, thank you so much for joining today. Pleasure. So thanks, Bill, for, uh, for that great interview, that great report. Uh, Bill really does it so well. and. Uh, um, a really great interview. Uh, Bill's left us at this point, but we're delighted to be uh, joined in the panel by Dave Lindsay, uh, a legend of, uh, of sales in our organization, somebody that really knows watches and particularly knows why his customers, some of the best collectors in the country, really appreciate watches. So Dave joined us on the, on the panel to give us uh, his comments. And we're now going to talk about Gégé Lecoutre. Uh, you'll hear it pronounced differently by everybody. It's one of the things, it's why we tend to call it GLC, but it is actually a lovely name, Gégé Lecoutre. And uh, it was the second brand that we saw today. And the first thing that we saw from them was some developments in what is our biggest selling range, the Rendezvous range. Uh, so tell us about some of the ladies' product we saw in the Rendezvous for you. Um, today, what we, the, the, the interesting thing, and it's, got, it's quite striking from um, Jaeger Lecoultre this year, is they brought out the Rendezvous Night and Day in yellow gold. The brand hasn't done yellow gold in a long time, um, so this for them was uh, an introduction into a theme that we saw beginning to come out last year, and some of the other brands have also introduced a little bit of yellow, but it, um, they've introduced it on the 34mm case size. Um, the entire collection is automatic. At the moment, it comes on the... Um, black crocodile shiny strap, um, alligator strap, sorry. Um, what was interesting though is we fed back, it will possibly work just as well on a blue strap because of the hands and they were receptive to that. It was really interesting that they would take on that feedback, but this is a great addition to the collection. Really looking forward to seeing it arrive in June. And the price? 13,000 pounds. Which mm -hmm. we think is great value for, the, for, for this gorgeous mm -hmm. product. Absolutely. So last year, uh, Gégé Lecoutre uh, relaunched their iconic range, the Reversal range. It's been a good success. It's come in towards the end of this year, but it's been a good success for us. And we saw great expansions of, uh, of Reversal today. But I know you love the Reversal, Dave, so tell us about it. Okay, yeah. Um, think Jaeger Lecoutre and you think Reverso. Today we saw the Tribute Moon, which is the gents' um, large case. It retails £11,000. On the front side, you have the date, hours, minutes and moon phase. Plenty of moon phases around the fair this, this week. And then flip it over to the reverse and you see you have the night and day um, function but you have the dual time facility as well. So beautiful watch available from April onwards. Tribute me in. And practical for a guy that's, uh, that's moving between uh, different time zones and you got it. Wants, to, wants to stay current. And uh, the other one, uh, the other thing that Gégier do really well is uh, complications and, uh, and something that we'd all love to be is a master ultra thin complication. And we saw a beautiful one today, Mark. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm not ultra thin, but the watch is. It's a, it's a 39 millimeter case, and um, it's an existing model, uh, with, uh, normally with a silver dial, but they've introduced it um, in this very, very on-trend deep blue. It's a terrific looking watch. As you can see, I like blue, everybody likes blue, and so, um, so this is a great interpretation of it. It's a power reserve, it's 40, 40 hours power reserve with a date um, and looks really, really great, 6,950 pounds. Great stuff when we think the, uh, the Gégier introductions this year are, are really on the market and uh, really going to be great for us uh, overall from uh, Gégier Likud. So another thing that uh, we thought you'd be interested in is who's wearing watches and why. One of the things about uh, uh, but SIHH is you bump into people all the time because nobody looks at one another in the eyes, we're all looking at the watches that they're wearing. So we thought we'd take a look. I'm wearing 
the velvet from uh, Roger Dubuis because it's a very exquisite and exclusive brand and I love it. I am wearing an IWC engineer because it's better fit for my grid. So this bracelet it, it fits very well. I'm wearing a um, Parmigiani Florier Calparisma watch. Today, I don't have a watch. I don't worry watch Nevon S-I-H-H, -H. but I have a collection of 86 watches. I'm wearing the Gégère Le Coul Traverso watch. It's a very classical watch with Art Deco uh, design. Uh, it's a watch from uh, the 20th century, designed for the polo, and I'm a fan of the horses, so this is why I've selected that one. Um, I like it very much because you have a small star at six and uh, it's a very elegant and classy as time and I can wear um, in that time as well in the evening. I'm wearing RM005. I love this brand. Then this is one of the first swatches made by Richard Mille and uh, I love the DNA, I love the, the, the case and I love the storytelling of the brand. So that's what's happening out in the halls of SIHH uh, as we speak, uh, great stuff. The next brand that we had the pleasure of today is uh, Piaget, another brand with a great heritage in jewellery but also a great uh, tradition and uh, heritage in watches and in particular ultra, ultra uh, thin watches is their real area of speciality and that's what we saw today in, the, in spades. The biggest selling range of uh, Piaget is Altiplano and that's where we're going to start and we're going to start with a great product that Faye is going to tell us about. Um, firstly, we've got to introduce that this year is a huge year for Piaget and Altiplano because it's their 60th anniversary. So we saw some great executions. A lot of them were limited editions specifically for the anniversary. So we won't get a huge amount of these of these models, but we had a, a great meeting. And the model I decided to, to talk about, um, two years ago they introduced the 900P. At the time it was the thinnest mechanical watch um, produced. The case and the movement together was 3.65 millimetres. Uh, this year they've launched it uh, in a 38 millimetre case size, beautiful rose gold and white strap. It's just a beautiful model. Really happy to see it and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get a few into the UK as part of our, um, our allocation. And amazing to see that the case effectively in the movement is uh, almost, it's one and the same thing to get it that super thin. Yeah, they're integrated together, and this model's only to it £23,000. I appreciate that is, is, can be considered quite a lot of money, but in terms of what this model is, it's fantastic. Great. And we also saw from Altiplano some uh, fantastic limited colours, Mark. We did indeed, yeah, and this is an example. Um, it's, uh, it's yellow gold, it's a yellow gold case, 40 millimetres. It's an automatic, um, and it's got this great green dial. It's a degraded green. It looks really super. It looks pretty good at the back as well, actually. Um, it's got a micro rotor, uh, being an automatic, and it's, uh, the movement is three millimetres uh, thick. So again, it's part of the, part of the uh, ultra thin range from, uh, from Piaget. But the colour is everything, yellow, gold, green, fantastic. And we equally saw a beautiful brown and a beautiful blue and the colours of the dial are really special. Huh? That's very true, yeah, and this is, uh, is 22,400, it's great. Great. The other thing that's happening uh, was introduced last year from Piaget, was a movement into sport watches, big surprise when we saw it last year, it's called the Polo S, uh, but a big success with us uh, right away and we know from them a big success around the world. So we saw some great extensions of Polo S today, a chronograph in black, tell us about it Dave. Okay, I will do, but before I do so, it's good to see my uh, learned friend bringing out a green Altiplano for our Celtic living CEO. <laughs> Unlike my colleagues, I've got a, I'm actually wearing mine. It's the Polo S chronograph uh, with a DL, ADLC bezel. There are some very expensive watches and beautiful watches on Piaget. If I was walking out with one today, it would be this one. It's 12,200 pounds. The Polo S has become Piaget's fastest growing model within their range. That's me, it's a great watch. Great stuff. Uh, as we said yesterday, we'll see again today, Audemars Piguet had a huge influence in everything that happens in luxury watches, particularly in, uh, in sport watches. Uh, we love the brand in the UK, we love to represent it, uh, and we loved everything that we saw yesterday. Uh, we're going to talk a wee bit about, uh, about some of the products that we saw yesterday that we're going to be able to bring you here on screen. Uh, and the first thing we saw, you make a little change in, uh, in, in something in Audemars and it's a big deal. 
So the changes that we saw yesterday uh, were to, in the dial on, uh, on chronographs that uh, were small movements, but we do think had a big influence in the aesthetic of the product. So tell us what you thought about it, Mark. Well, I, I stammered my way through the dial colours yesterday, so I'm going to talk about the bracelet first, which, um, I mean, in the world of watches, there are some iconic bracelets, like the President from Rolex or the Jubilee or the Santos from Cartier. Um, the Royal Oak bracelet um, is, is an amazing thing. It, it's, uh, nothing else looks like it. It takes about three hours to actually manufacture the parts, but then it takes seven hours to actually polish and, and, uh, and, and, and fettle, fettle the thing and put the thing together. So it's a 10-hour process on the bracelet. Um, the current models at 19,500 in steel um, are sort of mono-coloured dials, so you have a black dial or, or a silver dial. Uh, they've now gone to a silver dial with, with, uh, with black zones or a black dial with silver zones, um, and it's, it's a fantastic thing. The, uh, it's an iconic watch, really yes. terrific. The balance of the dial now is really gorgeous. I think the, the way they've actually got the proportion to the subdials. Yeah, they, they've widened up the subdials so they're slightly bigger, and it's mean, meant they've had to move the uh, the date aperture slightly. Uh, but it's that attention to detail that makes AP a really special brand. And just moving up a little, Dave, in term, uh, moving up more than a little in terms of price and the material to the gold. Yeah, here we have the same watch, but in rose gold. There's not a lot to say other than what we said already, but the Different colours on the subdials really make an impact. This particular model is £30,800. It's on the blue strap. It also comes on brown, the brown strap. It also comes on an 18 karat gold bracelet as well at 45500 These will all be available from, from August onwards. But these are fantastic. I mean, just look at the picture. So, great stuff from Audemars. I know you love Audemars for you. Absolutely. Um, the, we t t just touched on the uh, Royal Oak yesterday, 37 millimetres, but even in the larger case size, these chronographs are fantastic. The only um, disappointing thing is, is the, the quantities we're able to secure and how late in the year they're coming, but um, they're just really strong watches. So to any customers out there, let us know early and we'll do everything we can to help you. So that's it, folks. That's, uh, that's uh, the end of our, our two days here at SIHH. We do hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, we do hope that you'll let us know what you think of it. You can follow us on all of our uh, social channels and do let us know your thoughts. Uh, we'll be back again uh, with the Basel Fair. It happens March 23rd, a little north of here, but still in Switzerland. Uh, we'll be back doing this again. And once again, we hope that, uh, that you'll join us there. So a very, very exciting two days, a very clear reading on some uh, really important trends that we see here in this marketplace. And just to summarize some of them, we see uh, dials getting bit smaller for men, we see dials getting bigger for women, uh, a lot of coloured dials, we love our black dials in the UK and they're still there of course, uh, but blue dials from everybody, some other interesting dials happening too, green, brown, brown is important, bronze is important, there's a nod to yellow gold, we've expected it to, to uh, be coming from, uh, from last year and we see some great examples of that coming through now. Um, a focus on value, uh, and very, very clearly identified by George Kern as a focus for the Richmond Group. We saw that in the, every brand that presented to us, and we saw more steel product, for example, coming through that's giving value. Uh, moon phase is a really important complication. Again, we're seeing uh, in, in many, many more products. Heritage, icons, icon relaunch, uh, sports, um, just about everything that we want for the UK market, and it really is a great category. We really have a great job. We've been delighted to bring you some of the excitement that uh, we have. Hope we'll see you in some of our stores at some time soon. Thanks for joining us.